within 7.0 we're really kind of matured their Kubernetes offering, right? Now vSphere with Kubernetes is actually integrated into vSphere itself via workload management. Tanzu is that control plane, that supervisor control plane for actually running and managing clusters side by side with virtual machines, right? Which to me is um, re really been a game changer, right? Previously, you know, Kubernetes were kind of this separate thing that you'd have to manage outside of, of vCenter. Now there's a ton more integration, I think a ton more coming. And of course, last but not least, you know, their, their cloud uh, native storage driver um, uses SPBM, right? Which uh, the demo that I'm about to show uh, leverages heavily. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty slick way of managing your infrastructure. Um, so, so this is, you know, what cloud native storage looks like within vSphere today. Um, again, I, I, I just don't have time to go into a lot of detail on this slide, but uh, the, the key thing, right, within SPBM is that with when you use SPBM with vVols, um, you have a lot more aware uh, array aware based functionality available, which I'll step into in the demo. With vMFS, um, it's tag based, right, which means it's it's fixed things. You completely construct your tags and categories within vCenter and apply them to those VMFS data stores. With, with vVols, it's a little different in that vVols uh, show, you know, what array capabilities are available beneath it. Um, and again, I think this is a really slick way to give, you know, Kubernetes developers or dev test developers um, what tier or what level of replication, you know, or, or what have you of, of storage, right, with, with vVols. Um, so stepping into the next slide, this is just a quick demo that I whipped up just to kind of show, um, you know, what does Kubernetes within vSphere look like on pure storage? So I've got a vVol data store, K8 vVol's demo. Uh, I'll show both tag based on the array as well as what, uh, excuse me, vCenter array based tagging as well as, uh, as well as array based tagging. So I've assigned a tag to it within a category. Um, and now if I go into policies and I'm, I'm just gonna create a new storage profile, right? And I'm applying it to this workload domain vCenter instance um, called SC demo, vVol's demo. Uh, I'm going to use uh, pure storage uh, tagging. Um, so here's the uh, here's what you can kind of do that I think is neat. So let's just say I want it. I want this what this policy to land on a flash array, and then I want it to land on this specific flash array. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that here, right? Um, and then in addition, you can use kind of the legacy method of vSphere-based tags as well here. Okay, so I've I've done both for this one, right? So I can see that this K vVol date data store resides on that array and I've tagged it, right? So this is that, that's the only compatible one that I have here. Um, so now that I've got this storage policy created, I can start to do some really interesting things with it. So if I go over to workload management, um, I've got this namespace created. And if I go over to summary, you can see that, you know, you can apply different storage policies to that namespace. Um, I already got two, I'm gonna add SC vVol's demo to it. Okay, so now that storage policy has been applied. If I hop over to the CLI and actually connect to this uh, Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, um, you can see there, there's my namespaces that you probably saw in vCenter, at least most of them. Um, those are my available contexts. Um, and here we can see get storage class, right? So that storage class that I just added from within vCenter is now available, right, as to that TKC. Um, and now what I'm going to do is actually look at a couple of YAML files and just kind of show you some some neat ways. This is totally basic stuff, but, you know, just some kind of neat ways that you can use these. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create both a, a PV and a PVC, right, using that storage class. Um, so this one's named PVVVOLS demo, and I'm using that storage class. Uh, the other one is called PVC, so persistent volume claim, and I'm also assigning it to that storage class. Um, so that's kind of the first building block, right, for setting up the PV and the PVC. So I'm applying that uh, YAML file. Those uh, two things have now been created. Um, and now let's say I wanna go and actually deploy something meaningful, like you know my like a MySQL instance, right? So I'm gonna go into deployments. Um, there we can see I've got this uh, MySQL YAML file. And then if I scroll down um, that PVC that I built just recently, um, now I can assign the persistent storage, you know, what's actually in that database that I wanna retain should that pod, you know, get blown up or something like that, um, I, I'm applying that here. Um, and again, this is super simple demo. I'm actually not gonna, I'm, I'm just spinning up the deployment and, uh, you know, creating the service. 
Um, but it will actually create that persistent volume claim. And I just wanted to show you quickly, you know, how it kind of maps um, from here back down to the array, back to vCenter. Um, so here's that demo uh, PVC that I created. Um, if I actually go into monitor and my container volumes within this data store, you know, that you can see there it is. Um, it was actually just built. Um, and then if you actually start to drill down into vCenter, you know, you can start to see some of the alphanumeric identifiers, right, that, that helps you map what goes to where. And then you can see there's the actual persistent volume that I created. The persistent volume claim has been claimed by uh, that MySQL deployment. Um, and then just going over to PowerShell, just because why not? Uh, you can see if I get vDisk, uh, there is the uh, there is that persistent volume claim as well. And then last but not least, if we um, if we actually go into our volume group, so you know Vival uh, uses volume groups at the array level. Um, we can see it's also a first class disk, um, a VMware first class disk. And you know there we can see there's our there's our 50 gig volume. Now I um, now with that, um, uh, hopefully most of you saw the recent news that Pure Storage has acquired Portworks. Uh, Portworks is a, a leading data services platform for uh, providing persistent storage to containers. Uh, uh, this helps us advance what we've been doing uh, in providing um, storage services for containers through the pure service orchestrator, and um, I think helps us align to what a lot of uh, a number of our large customers uh, have been requesting. What's really nice about Portworks is it actually publishes a catalog of data services that a developer can um, uh, leverage at the time that they're creating an application, right? So they can look and say, does, does this app need a, you know, what level of resiliency, or do I need a backup policy, and what does it look like? Should I, you know, encrypt this data? Right? They can, they can, they can grab those data services from the catalog at the time of creation, or can modify the services after a container has been deployed. In addition, Portworks is is software only and it allows it to run on multiple clouds. Uh, it was just recently went GA in in Azure, so customers can run it on prem, can run it in a hyperscaler or in another cloud. Uh, they can run it with direct attached storage or storage arrays from Pure Storage or uh, any other uh, enterprise storage provider. Now, um, we just closed on the acquisition, and so now we are actually working on our, our integration roadmaps. And so hopefully at a uh, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to have a separate Tech Field Day session just discussing Portworks, uh, kind of go into deeper details around each of this, the functions as well as our roadmap and some of the integrations that are planned. So it looked like you created storage using a policy that was mapping to storage pool in in Pure. Is that what it was doing? Y um, yes, it was. Yes. Okay. And then it's using VVols. So every PVC gets its own VVol. Yes. Exactly, and it's and it's a uh, set as a first class disk as well. So it's kind of an independently manageable disk within vSphere. Okay, so if you were storing persistent data using that container, like a stateful application, then you would have some of the vVol functionality and protection based off of that. Exactly. Yep. So you get a very granular restore options, snapshotting, replication. You know, all the all the goodness that goes along with VVOLs from a, you know, at least relative to VMFS from a granular perspective is is readily available. Yeah, uh, sure. in addition, you get portability that's really easy between, uh, in the VMware context, between a container in Tanzu and a VM in vSphere, but as well as, as you could clone, replicate, and connect a, a copy of that data to a bare metal server, to a, another cloud provider, um, and so uh, again, a lot of portability, and and we're seeing an increased demand for portability in direct alignment with the demand increase for Kubernetes. Hmm. What level of information is stored in that storage class for the developer? If they want to like just pull a list of storage classes and pick the one they need, are they able to see all of the additional like tags and information that's in that storage policy? You can control that to a pretty finite level um, so you know if you want user a to have access to storage policy b you know and, and, and 
such and things like that. Um, you can control that. I'll be honest, you know, for me, Kubernetes is a relatively new venture. So I, I just honestly don't know, you know, the how deep you can go it, either from the CLI or vCenter. But it, it, from what I've seen so far, it, it does seem like it's, you do have a lot of control in terms of, you know, what role do I want to give? Basically all of those vCenter permissions, you know, you can kind of dole them out, you know, as, as necessary. Right, right. I was more thinking of as a developer, I know I want this level of security and replication from yeah. my storage class. Just be able to check all the storage classes and go, okay, that's the one I need. Uh, it's got yeah. the right tags. And I'd say that Portworks is actually one of the reasons we acquired them is that they, they certainly give you that a, a lot more. They, they give you a ton of information in terms of what, if I'm a developer, yeah, what I want. Gold storage is replicated every six hours or something like that. That mm -hmm. that is definitely some value that Portworks brings to the table. Right, right. That acquisition makes a makes a heck of a lot of sense in this context. So. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Thank you.